Hello, welcome to What's Bubbling in Zimbio. I'm Inventor Dan Zen, and in this bubbling, we're going to take a look at the new vector container, which is a template. It's not exactly in Zim, but it's a template that you can use to transfer Adobe Animate shapes into Zim. So let's uh, let's take a look at some examples. All right, vector container, transfer Adobe Animate shapes to Zim. And here we have an Adobe Animate shape that has been, or shapes, that's been um, transferred. And same with this heart. And we're changing the color of that heart as well. Now, most of the hard work here was done by CreateJS to be able to uh, export to HTML5 from Adobe Flash. So um, that's built into, oops, Adobe Animate, I mean. That's built into Adobe Animate um, when you publish. It will, uh, when you publish to an HTML5 document, um, let, let's take a look and see what that looks like. Uh, two, 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 two. So let's close that, I guess. All uh, right, the vector container, a little bit of marketing here uh, from Adobe Animate through CreateJS into Zim. All right, so here's. Uh, the index file. So this is a, a Zim vector container example. Now the the type of uh, code that you get is, is here. So this is for the bug. And if we click in here, this is the JS file that gets um, that gets saved when you publish an HTML5 document from Adobe Flash. In here, there's a bunch of stuff. We've gone over this in other captures as well. But in here, there's a bunch of stuff that, that relates to, uh, I don't know, text and font and stuff like that. But if you come on down, here's the stage content right here. And it's these layers that uh, that's what you've made. Layer 3, layer 2, layer 1. And then here's the way that they're adding those to each one they they do a timeline add tween timeline add tween timeline add tween now we don't really need all of that stuff now if you're going to make an actual movie clip with a timeline and stuff like that you may need all those and you'd have to revisit this procedure it would change a little bit but right now we're talking about we've we've just made some shapes in there uh, and those are on layers uh, or or not maybe uh, here's another one heart heart is just one shape so if we scroll on down, here's where it says stage content, and there's one shape right there. Now, if it is one shape, you're welcome to just grab this, this code right here. That's, that's all you really need, and you can come in and make a Zim shape with it. But as soon as things start going on multiple layers, um, it's a little bit harder, a bit trickier to do that. You want to make use of the automatic system. So here's how that automatic system uh, can be brought into Zim then. This is the index file with the Zim con uh, vector container. If we scroll down, here it is, function uh, vector container. So this is a class. Um, we find out how big the, uh, this is the dimensions of our container. I'll show you where to find those. Uh, and we're creating a, a namespace. So this is like a template. You don't really need to do much with that. You will have to put in the width and the height there. But uh, don't worry about the template stuff. And here's the instructions. So the 10 steps that we do to do that. Um, here's where we've copied and pasted this from, from up above. Layer 3. Do you recognize this? So this is, so underneath the instructions here, we're just copying and pasting our layers. Uh, just how they came out, all the way down to here. Okay, so that's that's the layers copied. We don't need to add it to a, a timeline, so we're commenting out each of the, please add to a tween. You can delete them, obviously. I've just commented them out here to show you that that's what we had to comment out. And instead of adding them to the timeline, we go back to the, the way it was sort of done before, where we're just adding these to this. So um, this line comes with the template. And you can just replace whatever shapes you have there uh, in here. Shape 3, shape 2, shape 1, shape. Shape 3, shape 2, shape 1, shape. So if you only have shape and shape 1, then you would only put shape 
one and shape there. And they're in reverse order. So reverse order from the top, and that's line seven, it appears. And then that's it. Uh, oh, uh, you, you have to find the width and the height. So all of this stuff came in just, just as it was, except we've uh, in the template is, is this extra line that you have to fill in yourself there. Uh, the other thing you have to fill in is the width and the height, and where that comes from, if we go back into the bug here, underneath our layers, right here, is a p dot nominal bounds, and that takes the bounds of all of the things that have happened, and right there is the width and the height. This is the starting x and starting y. You can ignore that. So uh, that's the width and height right there, and in the heart, there's the nominal bounds. In the heart, it was 202, 185. So with those nominal bounds, uh, we made another one for the heart down here. Here's the heart, oh, and there's the nominal bounds placed in the heart right there. Now note the heart was called vector container. I just copied the whole thing, but we don't want two vector container classes. So I've now called that heart there. And down at the bottom of the heart, mm, here, where it extends, it used to say extend vector container. It now says extend heart. So two places you have to change that. Just scrolling up here, this one says vector container. So we're welcome, or we could have changed it to bug. And there it is, vector container there. Now how do we use that? That's a vector container class. So therefore, here it is. Var bug is equal to a new vector container. We're going to rotate that, center reg it on the stage, and drag it. That will come because it extends a zim container. It comes with all of the zim methods. If you wanted to call that bug, you could. And you would call it bug here. And then up at the top, you would call it bug there. And if we open in browser, there she be. You still got the bug. If we didn't rotate the bug, by the way, when we made the bug, this is the direction that the bug was. So refresh here. There's the bug not rotated. Okay. So that's the uh, the basics of the vector container. You would just come find this. It's at zimjs.com slash vector container. And uh, you can then use this template as well to copy and paste your stuff in from Adobe Animate. We've done a couple other bubblings and captures on uh, bringing things in from Adobe Animate, but decided to make it a little bit easier. So this is the, the syntax. I suppose I could probably even uh, make a parser on the whole JS file and have it just flow right into a syntax. But anyway, for now, you're copying and pasting. Uh, well, how about changing the color? So in this second case here, we still have that open. In the second case, we have a heart, but when I press on the heart, I'm changing the color of the heart. Oh, note for the bug as well, if you wanted to, you could pass in extra information here in the constructor, such as the color. So there we are collecting a color. And then down in here, on the one that uh, these are different parts, but it looks like that one is actually the color of the bug. So we'll delete that and just say color here. We might want to put in a default color. So if zot color, that just is the same as really if uh, color not, not equal to null or something like that. Anyway, if zot color, um, oh, not zod, zog, sorry, <laughs> not zod, not zog, but zot, if zot color color equals what color shall it be? Uh, red, I suppose. So if you're using um, uh, JavaScript 6, you can put in your your default right in the parameter. So there it is. Uh, it's going to be red if we don't pass in a color. Shall we see what happens? It should be red now. There it is red and not rotated. But if we do pass in a color here, we can say frame dot uh, pink, for instance, and now we have a pink bug. There's a pink bug. And we should bring that rock back. What was it? Minus 90? Pink? Oh, and a dot. 
not that it really matters. There's a pink bug. Oh, so isn't that cool? And uh, if you wanted a black bug, you could put in black like that. Ooh, the black bug. <laughs> I'm a beetle, I'm a beetle, I'm a beetle. But how do we make it so that we can change it afterwards? Now, there's a little bit of a trick to that. And this is the trick that uh, CreateJS provided us with a few years back that allows us to record any drawing command and then later adjust that drawing command. So we've been doing that for a while now with changing the color of our shapes, like triangles, rectangles, and circles. That's how we can change the color there. And we've just recently exposed that um, as a command, uh, color command, so that you can do bitmap fills and gradient fills and stuff like that. So we did a, a, a Zim bubbling on that a little while back. So here's how we can adjust the template, uh, the vector container template, so that we can change the color. It's right here. Uh, this used to say this dot shape dot graphics dot fill some color dot stroke dot um, supply this path to it. So that's saying make this path have this stroke. So that's how you could change the stroke if you wanted to. And you've also got dot ss for stroke style. Um, right now we've just got color. So that's what it used to say. But what we've done is we've want to record this command right here. So that's a dot command. And uh, just copy that to there. So we've broken this into two. We're going to um, have that command, but we want to record that. So we would say var command or whatever variable we want is a recording of that command. So it does that command but it also records oh, that command. And then we carry on and set the stroke and the path. So now that we have access to this, uh, we've set a getter and setter method down here. Now you may not have done getter and setter methods before, but that's just, um, that's just JavaScript, so plain JavaScript. What this is doing is please define a property called color on this, which is our object. And when we go to get that property, we'll return our color, which is whatever color was passed in. So it's up top here. Oh, where the heck did it go? Color. <laughs> okay. So we uh, return that color. Where were we? Oh, I think it went up too far, just on the heart. Yeah, it did. Yeah, we return that color. And when we set the color, so if somebody sets a color property on our, on our heart, then it sets our color to C, so that later if we ever ask for it again, it will be, um, it will be the correct color. Don't forget that step. And then we take the command and apply a style to it that is the color. That's how CreateJS uh, set it up, that it's a style there. And um, if you pass that in, it's color. Now, in other other things, like we can change that to a, a bitmap fill there, or a gradient fill, and these kinds of things as well. But anyway, if we just want to change color, then it's style. That's what we chose. So now, down below, when we use this, here's the heart. And we've made it gray to start. We've added it to the stage, given it a scale and a position. By the way, pose is working pretty good these days. Here, here, or uh, place. Uh, watch that because we have chaining now. If I just say place there and we view this, refresh. The heart goes there and it allows me to drag it. Uh, see the crosshairs there? I decide where to put it. And when I look at the uh, the, the uh, what's called the panel here, the uh, console, it says. Object X 850, object Y 999. I used to have to, or we used to have to, um, if we passed into place the name of the object, such as heart, uh, it would then say heart.x. Is that heart.y? But that was an extra step to, you know, you'd have to say place, quote, heart. And it was always bothersome for me. But now that we have the dot pose, I provide both ways here when we position something. And we can just grab the end bit of that right there, the object.pose, come on in here and replace the place with object.pose.
or with the pose. So uh, that becomes really simple. We don't have to worry about naming it when we place it. We just copy the end of it. And now that we've placed it, uh, there it is placed where we placed it. <laughs> Neat, huh? Anyway, we were talking about clicking it though and changing the color. So back in the heart, we've got our heart. We've set the cursor to a pointer and we said heart dot on mouse down. Set the heart's color. Uh, so at this point, you know, it's, it's as easy as we could set the color to uh, green. Uh, that'll be a lovely the old green heart. So ignoring all of what we did there, when we click the heart, we'll just set its color to green and update the stage. And if we refresh here, refresh, there's the heart. Click, and it's green. Okay, but that's not toggling. So to toggle it, what we're doing is we're setting the heart equal to the result of this conditional of a ternary operation. So um, if the heart color is gray, then we're going to set it to pink. Else, we're going to set it to gray. So that's a ternary toggle. So the heart is going to be assigned to the results of this operation right here. Some people like to put brackets, but you don't have to. And that sort of says it's going to do this operation and assign the results back to color. So if then some people even like to put brackets in here, but you don't have to. So if heart color is equal to double equal to the frame dot gray, so that's saying is it gray? Well, if it is, then set it to pink. Else, set it to gray. See how that works? Neat, huh? But the important part there isn't really the ternary operator. The important part is we're able to set the color of that shape that we've imported from Adobe. And uh, that's great news to be able to do that. That gives you certain power. Yay! And that is the uh, vector container, discussions of the vector container, a nice easy way now to bring in, I mean it's still a two-step process but it's not too bad, huh? you don't even have to really think too much and just put it into those that vector container. What we've done, and if we just take a look here at the teacups, I know, what was it, tea bugs, where did they go, T T T T bugs right here, is we're running model view controller with T bugs, but we did say in our scripts we've made a vector JS as well. And this file contains, uh, here's the vector instructions, so that's nice. This file contains, here I'll just reduce this, you don't need to see it, um, the vector for the bug, there it is, the vector for a star. There it is, and a vector for a heart. And both the heart and the star need to change color. So we've added in that changing of color in, in both cases. So now we can star something, change a color. And I think the bug, oh, the bug, uh, we passed in the color as we made it. So if, if you only need the bug to be one color, but any color, you can just pass in a parameter and then set the uh, the color as you create it. The bugs never change colors, but they are different colors. Whereas the star change, needs to change color. So that's why we added the color property to that. And so that's made life pretty simple. There we have our vectors, which are our assets uh, sitting outside there, ready to use inside of Zim. And that is what's bubbling at Zim. A vector container template. How exciting is that? And once again, you can find that at zimjs.com slash code slash vector container. And you can get that example we were working with. Ciao. Have a great day. Bye.